All right, thanks for staying with us now. Um, the father of the 12 year old Christian International School student, Whitney Adedira, or Adenira, who allegedly died during the school inter house sports events in Lagos, has said his daughter died of electrocution. And Dr. Michael Adenira made the claim in an interview with the BBC Pigeon on Sunday. Uh, meanwhile, the school management in a statement on Sunday said the disease slumped in public view and not under any hidden circumstances, adding that she was rushed to the nearest medical facility for first aid, um, uh, according to them. Now, child safety is the area concerned with limiting children's exposure to hazards and reducing children's risk to harm. Children are particularly vulnerable to accidents and their safety requires different approaches from those uh, from the adults around them. So how can child-focused institutions begin to start to handle crisis management? That's the question. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, Africa, one with the hashtag Wayshow. All right, so this conversation, um, a lot of people have talked about it from different angles, but I, I want us to narrow it to three things. The role of the government, the role of, um, what's it called, the role of the facility managers themselves, and the role of the school. I think we should make it four, and the role of the parents. We just narrow it down, right? I mean, when this incident happened, first of all, quickly, what came to your mind? I'll come to EC, then we'll bring in our guest. Okay, so um, before it was established that the child um, died from electrocution, I saw the video where the mother came out and said, oh, she was looking for her child, she went to the Agege Stadium, she cursed and all of that. And then by the time she got to the hospital... Or it was not a hospital, it was an immunization centre. So that was what struck me first. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, it was not a hospital. Then the school came back and said, oh, we're just looking for the quickest or the fastest um, seemingly medical practitioner that could attend to the child. Okay, no problem. Then second, she came and said, oh, when she saw the child, the child was already, or no, that she had called, I think it was the guardian or the school administrator or something like that. And the person was very lackadaisical about it and said, well, the child just fell, oh, we don't know what happened, oh, but go to Agege Central Hospital. And I'm like... And there was no such thing as Agege Central ah, Hospital on the map. Know, it was it Central was mosque. mosque. And she had to, imagine her going around, how, how long it took her to go around first before she finally found that the immunization, immunization center. center. School administrators need to do better. I always say this. I know that I have worked in a school. I worked in a school for I worked in schools for about seven years, and then I realized that what most schools don't understand is that it's not a matter of if there's going to be a crisis. They it's a will. Of when there's a crisis, what do we do? What steps do you take? Is there a policy that says, okay, in the case where a child complains of a headache, step one, mm. check temperature. Step two, that's why I always praise the last school I worked in. You dare not. A child dares not go home and says, oh, mommy, I had a tummy pain in school today, and I told Mr. and Mr. said I should go and drink water. What? Immediately any child complains about anything, your duty is to first create an incident report, then call whoever it is that can attend to that child. It's not, it's not in your place because you're not a medical practitioner. But then, fine, okay, maybe the school can say, okay, we need to create, like you've said, crisis management. There are steps to creating a crisis management mm. team. You know, First, okay, maybe like the administrator can then be the head of the crisis management team. There's a school health facility and all this. So my question is, first, what does it mean that there was no first aid? Mm. It's a house spot. It's one of the most risky events to hold ah. where you have children. Hey, it's God. a house spot. I fear I'm not even house This thing you said, my sister slumped. Hmm. Because my sister is used to 100 meter race. Hmm. So she now ran 800 meter race. She slumped, like collapsed. It was glucose that they were packing in her mouth that, that resuscitated her. So how can they... So in the house naturally, yes. it's a ground for injuries exactly. and all of that. That even that there was no medical facility on ground there. Well, let me come to you, Isi. What are your thoughts or what, was, what, what came to your mind when you heard about the story? What came to my mind when I heard the story was not again. <laughs> it's so sad that we have to go through this time and time again whenever a school has some sort of event or there is no event and a child has to suffer. 
let's not talk about the children that a child, you know, if, if you recall the incident of the little child who went swimming and the child drowned. Let's not talk about the child who went to school and was bullied by his peers. Not to talk of the child who was in a school and was bullied and died. There are so many instances that we can call to mind. And these are things that we didn't experience when we were in school. So what came to mind was not again. And for a school to be um, having that kind of um, event and not having um, health, a health care facility or, um, or, or individual or, or personnel on, on ground, that should be questionable. Mm. First things first. Absolutely. Secondly, yes. Secondly, the training of the staff. Something um, um, uh, Chinelo said earlier, you have to train the staff on something that has to do with things like this. You are supposed to do something like this. You train the staff in case this thing happens. This is what you're supposed to do. But I'm so sorry to say this. Majority of the schools that we have in Nigeria, they do not pay attention to things like this, not to talk of re, uh, thinking about the protection or the right of the child in that context, not to talk of the crisis management. Instead, they would rather start screaming and saying, or passing the blame back and forth. Let me keep it short so that uh, our experts- We can bring in our guests, yes. Taiwa Kilami is a social development lawyer, co-founder of Power Parenting Company, and parents' rights to social protection advocate and publisher. Akilam is arguably Africa's foremost child protection thinker and practitioner, and his unique philosophy and teachings on family um, strengthening um, child protection and related matters have been well received in over 133 countries, and is also a prolific writer, poet, and a blogger, a friend of the house, and thank you so much for joining us. He's joined us live from the U.S. Thank you so much, Tayo, for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure to be with you today. How are you doing? Well, we thank God we can be better. I mean, this conversation, I have so many questions. I've been, uh, you know, like so many things running in my head. First of all, um, why again another death? I, I have an event that I do with children. I gather about 3,000 children to play board games. And I know that in that event, I have mobile nurses on ground. Mm -hmm. And this is not a sport that requires... Any activity is board games. Activity. It's just mm -hmm. scrabble. And it's just in case the child begins to cry and faint because mm -hmm. our, they lost the match. Just for emergency purpose, there is a, a first aid. Um, what's it called? So who mentioned it? I don't know. If it was Chinelo or EC that mentioned uh, CPR. We don't even know all of those things. But Taiwo, you are a for uh, what's it called? Someone that's always at the forefront when it comes to child protection and child safety and all of that. First of all, when this news broke what came to your mind well i think uh, can you hear me yes we can. can you see me yes okay, we can because i'm not i'm not seeing myself we can I'm, see I, you i seem to be i'm seem to be hanging <laughs> yes anyways um um number one let me begin by commiserating with the I'm parents of the deceased uh it is not the prayer of any parent or even any school leader, that a child would die. Uh, so I commiserate with the parents. I pray that God will grant them the fortitude to bear the loss. And I commiserate with every stakeholder, including the school, uh, you know, in this uh, matter. I think what comes to my mind is the fact that when things like this happen, emotions will be high. Okay. People people would go to town and say a lot of things. Uh, where I always park in matters like this is not to take my views from the views of the mob, you know. Uh, the mob has no conscience, they say. And uh, where is the mob these days? Uh, when I was growing up, the mob was on my streets, you know, uh, in Ondo. But now the mob has since moved from my street, moved online. Social media. And so when, some, mm. when something happens, People say a lot of things. And I think it is, so when we go that route, parents are saying something, the school is saying something, and the tendency at the end of the day is for us to take side, you know. Uh, some people will take side with the school, some people will take side with the parents. Uh, I think those are not the ingredients of justice. You know, when we are talking about justice, justice says you are innocent until proven guilty. 
you know, that is that is the position of justice. Uh, justice has differentiated between what we call justice and revenge. Revenge is not the same thing as justice. There are two different things. So for me, where I park in this matter is that, and I want to just oppose this case quickly with the case of Sylvester Romani. You know, Sylvester Romani was uh, allegedly bullied to death in um, Dowen College. Dowen College, College yes. In, yeah. Yes, in 20... In, tw in 2020, 2020. in 2021, mm. 2021, uh, he died on the 30th of November precisely. And um, upon his death, uh, the government was silent. I mean, nothing was being heard from government, and there were a lot of agitations. On the on the 6th of December, 2021, the law firm of Falana and Falana. Um, you know, engaged by the parents, you know, uh, decided to uh, write to the Lagos State government to institute a corona inquiry into the death of this, uh, uh, I think it was also 12 years old or 13. And so, fun. yes, so, so the Lagos State government was asked to institute an inquiry. And between when Femi Falana wrote that letter and when the the uh, Lagos State government was going to respond. The TPP came out to issue a clean bill to everybody that was arrested. Everybody was okay. Everybody could go home, and that sparked a lot of uproar. Mm. And uh, people were nerves were were not going to be nerves were afraid. People were not happy. But in this case, uh, I think learning from the incident of. Um, Oromani. And it's important to note that Corona inquiry did not begin to sit in Oromani's case until 2022, January 21 precisely. But in this case, uh, the matter happened on the 9th and by the by Monday, last Monday, the Lagos State government has said that there should be a Corona inquiry into the matter. Please note, it is not established that the child was electrocuted. It's not been established. It's um, people have made different cases. The parents initially were not talking about electrocution. They were saying that they wanted to know what happened to the child. But now uh, there's the news about electrocution out there. Where I'm going to, what I'm going to say, what I say in this kind of situation is that let us let us hold our guns, let us hold our bullets, let everyone pay attention and follow the uh, investigation. Of the corona inquiry the corona inquiry is going to do two things number one the corona inquiry is going to determine the cause of death and circumstances of death those are the two things corona inquiry is going to do everybody uh, is submitting to that corona inquiry now and i think that's where we should park in the matter so that we will not uh take make assertions and uh, 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 put culpability at any quarter until we see the findings of Corona inquiry. Now, it's not been established also that the school did not put anything in place. Are you getting it? It's not been established. Now, there are speculations here and there. The school did not put anything in place and all of this. I think what we need to do is to calm down. And so what so, I'm sorry, saying... Why, Kilami. Is, yes. Sorry, sorry to butt in here, but yes. I mean, um, it's an inter-house sport, right? My, yes. my son's... Um, um, primary school, that particular Agege Stadium mm -hmm. was the location for their, their inter-house sports when they had, because again, you know the way schools are structured mm -hmm. in Lagos, they don't really have enough space, right, to mm -hmm. run a proper inter-house sports, uh, sporting competition, right? That Agege Stadium, I frequent, I was frequently, I mean, going to that stadium because of mm -hmm. the inter-house sports, um, what's it called? Um, activities that my sons um, held there when they were in primary school, right? So, I mean, if you as a school, if you had an ambulance, so all those emergency, um, what's it called, ambulance on standby, two things will be inside that ambulance. There will be a, a nurse that can probably administer CPR or first aid and give them, if they need to put oxygen, they need to put a drip, because it's a complete hospital but it's just mobile yes. right yes. so if that was in place i don't need to be it, it doesn't need to be established because from the reports of the mother this child was put in a school bus, bus with the driver with the driver the principal did not even leave the, the venue and they sped off mm -hmm. do you understand mm -hmm. so if that 
nothing was in place. I'm, I, I beg to differ. There was nothing in okay. place. Because if it was in place, it, the child would have been inside that, what's it called? The ambulance or the emergency, um, um, whatever. Then they would not can be I, driving to the hospital. Can I come in? Please can come, I in. come in. So that is what the mother has said. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? And the truth of the matter is that I want to, what I'm saying right now, I want to say with every sense of responsibility and every sense of, of empathy inside of me, uh, I empathize with the parents. I empathize. It is not, it is not, it is not, it is not easy, you know, for you to have raised a child for 12 years and something happens to the child and you want to know what has happened. And I'm interested in know what has happened. As, a, as an advocate, I'm interested. Now, there's a lot of things in the public domain. And that is why I'm saying that there's a difference between Romani's case and this case. In Romani's case, a lot of things were shrouded in, 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 in secrecy. Government did not act on time. But in this case, government has acted. They have said, okay, we have established a corona inquiry. What is the purpose of the corona inquiry? Establish the cause of death. Uh -huh. Establish the circumstances of death. The parents will have their day in, in corona inquiry because corona inquiry is going to take evidence from everybody that is involved, every stakeholder, including children. Uh -huh. That's what we saw in Roma, Sylvester Romani's case. Uh -huh. We were in court, so Sylvester Romani, every court city we were there were available because we wanted to follow proceedings. The same thing, you know, we have done in different times. Even in in in, in the in the Christland, you know, the Christland had a case, you know, in a former Christland case, we we're also in court. Are you getting it? Just to observe proceedings and to see how things were going on for ourselves, not to be told. So what I'm saying is this: when uh, there's a lot that the 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 parents are saying, the school also has issued a statement to also say that everything that was required for the safety of the children were available. They were there. That's what the school has also said. That's also a claim from the school. Now, what I'm now saying is that why we why we wait, and, and it's something I think that we should be interested in. Everyone who is interested in this matter should show up in that corona inquiry to see for themselves or follow the report in the newspapers. Mm. The only time they don't allow people to enter the corona inquiry sittings is when they are is when they are taking evidence from children because they don't want to take evidence from children in the public glare. But you know, so so that's what I'm advocating. But you see, everything that you are we are saying here does not take away the need for us to analyze the state of the school system in Nigeria today what is in place for the protection of children. Mm. That is critical. That's a subject we must look at. Because again, as, as, I, as, I, as, I, as, I, as I know, that when it comes to protecting children in school, it's a three-way thing. There are three rings of protection. One is the family. The second is the community. The third is the government. That is the state. Now, what is the role of all of these three? What do we have in place? What should we have in place? Now, note that ultimately, We'll be back to this point to analyze the, the Christland case in a more factual manner upon the finding of the corona, of the inquiry. corona inquiry. Whether, okay. whether the child was electrocuted, whether there was a whether there was a there was a ambulance, when there was no ambulance, whatever the facts are, every, nobody, everybody will be under oath before the corona of corona inquiry, okay. and they will have to testify. And please note. The two things that the corona inquiry is going to use, one, the autopsy of the child, uh -huh. this child that died, the corona inquiry will go through the autopsy, the doctor who conducted the autopsy will be, will take the witness stand, it will be, it will be, it will be, it will be uh, examined in chief, there will be cross-examination, nothing can be hidden at the end of the day. That is why I think that at the end of the day, we may be commenting too early on you know one side of the story let us the okay. legal government has said corona inquiry will begin to sit let us follow up and make sure that the corona inquiry sits and let us follow the proceeding of the corona inquiry and let's see what the issues are thank you whether okay, the so, child was electrocuted or not it, it was, will be established uh, whether it whether it, whether it, it, it fell in public glare whatever the issues are the corona inquiry will establish that. absolutely so, so that's what i think we need to wait all right let me let's go on a very short break when we come back from the mm -hmm. break we'll continue the conversation stay with us we'll be right back okay.
All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if we just tuned in, we're having a conversation around the incidents that happened with Chrisland, and we're looking at it from crisis management plan and um, child safety, you know, for especially for schools. And we have with us Taiwa Kilami. Now, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, Afco on the hashtag Wayshow. So I like the idea that he talked about, you know, um, the corona inquiry. So let us wait. Because I even said it when it first happened. I said, mm -hmm. see, we need to normalize autopsies mm -hmm. in this con yeah, country exactly. so that we don't even, it's not a guesswork. Mm -hmm. Because even if the school refuses to tell you, the autopsy would reveal it. But do you think, you know, um, do you think it is okay for the school to have kept quiet all this long? Because again, based on what, I mean, the conversation now, it mm -hmm. seems like, okay, the only party that we've heard yeah. is just the mom and the father, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, from the, the child. Do you think it is okay that something happens like this and it, the, there's no word from the, from, the, from the parent? Well, of course, it's not okay. Which, I mean, that's what I was just going to say. You see, when we're talking about crisis management in, in facilities that have to do with children, and so be it a school, whatever it is, as long as you have children, right? In fact, as a brand, totally, the worst thing you can ever do in time of crisis is to keep quiet. Because you are supposed to be able to, you know, cover your reputation at that time. And you keeping quiet is not going to help you. Yeah. And that is what has happened with this school in particular now. Because it has been said that they had... They've had one too many cases, you know, the very popular one that he had, um, the two-year-old child that was defiled mm -hmm. and all of that. And then it was said that at that time, they also didn't say a lot about it. They were covering up, they were doing it. When things like this happen, if this, whether they're even coming out to lie, if they come out and say something at that time, you would definitely have, like Mr. Tawa Kilami, 60% 60 pe 60 of people, or maybe 50 or 40, whatever percentage of people that would even, okay, at least they've said something. But the minute you keep yeah. quiet, Let's still look at it from another perspective, though, if mm. you don't mind me saying this. Okay. But our guest is already in here. But however, uh, we can look at it from the perspective that they are also trying to get their investigations together, get their facts together before they actually come out to say something. Okay. So see, that's, there's a two way street. To yeah, this. but then I'm now asking, right? This thing happened. The school, there were people from the school that were there. I'm not saying come and say this is what happened because you can't establish what has happened. But come out and say, okay, this thing happened. We are trying to do this. We are trying to do that. Give us some time instead of just keeping quiet. That's what I'm let, trying let, to Let say. me bring in Taiwa Kilami because I hear he's back. And I wanted to yes. just quickly okay. add yeah. to, 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 to Taiwa Kilami. I wanted to tell you that the reason the, the case is quite quick and swift, mm. right? Don't forget that we have an election right about the corner where mm -hmm. government officials are trying to seek... To, to be seen to be working. That's why, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned, that's why there's a bit of urgency in the case that, I mean, recent cases that have been happening. The lady that was shot at Aja, you know, now this case, you know, and all of that. Let's know that this one is just politics. We need to be serious <laughs> with crisis management, right? It doesn't have to be a political um, season for you, to, for you to act or do what is right. So, I mean, what would the government do done? Do what would school do? What should the parents mm -hmm. do? What should the institutions do? Like, for instance, the stadium. They have a body. Mm -hmm. They have a management body. What should they have done mm -hmm. in terms what of crisis management? Yes. Thank you very much for your question. Um, as this news broke on the 9th of, um, on the 9th of uh, February, and I followed the news keenly, you know, followed it keenly. I think the, issue, the school issued a press release on Monday. Uh, just after the, after the, you know, because initially, uh, when the news broke, the parents began to speak and all of that. And um, the parents were out there trying to make their case, calling for justice and all of that. I think the school, uh, the school issued a statement on Monday, you know, where, you know, they tried to talk about the fact that commiserate with the parents, talk about the fact that uh, I think a week before or thereabouts that the child was was not was doing poorly and the parents were invited and they took her away. And um, as a matter of fact, she was supposed to participate in the entire sport. She was excused from participating in the entire sport on health grounds. And the, the school issued that statement, which was which was sent to the public. You know, the unfortunate thing about this kind of matter is that a lot of emotions are out there. A lot of people are not happy about what is going on. 
Uh, so I think that presidency of the school has not enjoyed the same level of you know, publicity like the outcry of the parents. And it's expected. I mean, that's it's not sensational. I mean, it's not it's not it's so the response of the of the school does not bring sensationalism into the matter. What brings sensationalism into the matter is the outcry of the parents. And I think that's why the press list of the of the school has suffered a lot of a lot of um has, has been in the dark for for a very for for, as a matter of fact, if you listen to the interview of the mother, the mother was responding to that press release, saying that the school was saying that the child was doing poorly and all of that, that the child was okay and all of that. So um, now there's something that we mentioned, you mentioned, which is important. Now there's something in law that we call occupier's liability. I believe that in this corona inquiry. One of the bodies that need to be invited is the stadium. You know, because what machinery do they have in place? You know, you, you don't just give out a place mm -hmm. and say, we well, are giving it out. When you want to give out a place, I want to believe there is a form. Yes. On that form, I want to believe that the people will state the purpose for which they want to use the facility. Mm -hmm. You know, the number of people you are expecting. So as a facility that schools use from time to time, what measures do you have in place to ensure that the children or any occupier, any occupier is protected? Do you have in place all of the safety tips, safety uh, machinery to ensure that not if anything happens, which is unexpected, which cannot be unexpected in a place where you gather a lot of people? You know, what you call emergency in our own definition is lack of coping capacity. What makes something an emergency is not that it happens. What makes it an emergency is lack of capacity to cope. And that is what makes it an emergency. Because what you call an emergency that got out of hand for you happens in some other places. I mean, it happened as if it did not happen. So look at the example of the Sosoliso crash. Sosoliso crash, plane crashed in Podacot. You know, it, and it was, it was, there were a lot of casualties. The same thing that happened to Sosoliso happened in France. A plane crashed at the airport also. Not a single soul died. Everybody mm -hmm. was rescued. Mm -hmm. So the problem, therefore, was not with the crash. The problem was with preparedness. Capacity. The mm -hmm. people who were supposed to respond, the responsibility. Mm -hmm. People both capsizes. You know, they are both capsizes. Mm -hmm. And uh, before you know it, every soul is rescued. If a boat capsizes in Lagos, I mean, just, just write RIP. You know, you know, there. I mean, nothing is going to happen. So those are the issues that is important that we begin to look at within the school system. What do we need to put in place? What are the things that need to happen? For example, there's something we call risk analysis. You cannot do any event in any school or with children, you know, without doing what we call risk analysis. You, want, you can't take children and ask caution. You want to take them out of the school with, within Lagos, not to talk of within outside Lagos, not to talk of outside the country. There must be risk analysis. There are fundamental questions that you must ask and find answers to those questions. You know the purpose of the risk analysis? The risk analysis may see us cancelling the event. The risk analysis may see us cancelling the journey. The risk analysis may say we are not ready, we are not prepared. You know, there was one of the schools that we worked for. They wanted to take their children on an excursion. By the time we sat down with them on the risk analysis of the journey, they canceled the journey. It was a major competition that the children were going to participate in outside the country. By the time we finished the analysis, we sat down with them and we told them, you see, between the time that you have to prepare for this journey and the what is required, not visa, visa, everybody gets visa, but okay, for example, who are the people who are hosting this event? What machinery have they put in place to protect children? Have you viewed their, their policy? The venue of the event, have you, do you have an agent in the country that has gone to check the place for you? You know, all of these questions were the question, and they were saying, we have not. We have not. We have not. How do we undo parents? Mm -hmm. I said, if they go and there's a crisis and your children, something happens to your children, the same parents you don't want to face now, you are going to have to face them and you are going to, fa you are going to have to face them as, co as, co oh as corporates. God. And so what you are going to do now is to let them know that from your analysis, the children, you are not ready for the trip Absolutely. and we are not going to make the trip. Let me bring Isi in because she's been holding up. You know, the, my children actually, they canceled a basketball game on Saturday. 
because of the risk <laughs> management. Uh, it's better you cancel, low. You see? <laughs> yes, please. Look, uh, you, you've, you've, you've hit a, um, the nail on the head when you talked about the different types of um, individuals that are responsible for crisis management. But of all of these, who is most responsible for the crisis management? Is it the parents? Aside from the fact that we have, um, if, 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 if we have parents um, have an issue like what happened to uh, the child and this didn't happen in a school, for example, who is most responsible for this? Is not yeah. is it about the, is it about the student? Is it about the child? Is it about the the parents? Of all the three things, which is most important? A child does not take care of himself or herself. <laughs> a child, a child is anybody below eighteen. It is our responsibility to take care of children. Not only that, everything a child is going to do concerning his or her own safety, he or she is taught the same way we teach the child about everything. Is taught by example, is taught by words, by lessons, and all of that. And please note, who is responsible for time is dependent on who the child is with. Mm -hmm. If the child is at home, the parents are fully, 100% responsible for the safety of their children. When the children are within the school system, within the church, within the mosque, now at that point, the the parent, the school, the church, the mosque have a duty of care to ensure that the children under their care are protected. When you take responsibility for children, you are taking responsibility for their safety. Mm. You are, you, and, and, and do you know the definition of care for us? The definition of care is to anticipate the needs of children, to anticipate the threats to them, to now make adequate preparation to meet those needs and mitigate those threats well before they arise, well yeah. before they arise. That is why you cannot beat your chest that children are safe until you do the risk analysis. Mm. At the point I told schools, I told school, I said, you see, from the way things are, all this idea of bombing, arrest, uh, 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 insecurity and all of that, minimize how you take children on excursion. If minimize how you take children to go and see movies, go and bring the movie to your school. Buy the popcorn, bring everything to your school. Mm. Let the children be within your school because this whole idea of moving around at a point in our country became very, very dangerous. For example, this time, at uh, this time, where there's no fuel, uh -huh. there's insecurity, there's the gunshot, the gun battle here and there. It is not the right time to take children out. Say you are just so you look at it. For example, you want to take children to uh, a volatile place. You want to take children to 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 uh, to a place like Ife. You have to do your risk analysis. There's there's always there's in the past there have been crises between a, a small town known as Modakeke and Ife. You cannot yeah. take that decision without security report. How much relationship do you have with security apparatus of the state? Yeah. DSS of this world, DSS of this world, the the military intelligence and all of that. These are people that the, that schools, churches must need to pally. And I know I want to believe they pally them, you know, mm -hmm. one way or the other. So be sure that before you push things out, entire sport can be cancelled. Nothing is more important than the safety of the children. Absolutely. If we cannot vouch for the safety of the children, this event must not hold. Mm -hmm. The first thing is, until we are sure that the coast is clear, until we are sure that our children are safe, until we are sure that if there is a crisis, we have responsibility, mm -hmm. ability to respond. Everything, you know, is on ground. Until we are sure of that, we cannot put children out. Please note, nobody outgrows, nobody outgrows, uh, outgrows security. Mm. You know, you cannot outgrow security. At every point in time, I've been locking the doors since I was, my parents have been locking the doors since I was a, a small boy. I'm 52 years old now. I cannot say that because they have been locking the doors since all of these years and nothing has happened. And now I want to sleep tonight without locking the door. I just want to try it out. You know, nobody does that. Security, safety is a continuous and a conscious effort that we have to continue to make. When we give up on it, what are we doing? We're endangering the life ourselves our own lives, and we're engaging the lives of the children under our care. Right. One more thing, one more thing, I'm sorry, let me just quickly Easy. ask this question. Wait. Among the Child Rights Act, there is also um, um, recreation, health, uh, healthcare services, education, 
and and um, survival, basically. So uh, what role does crisis management have to play in all of these, please? Well, well I, I think that you see, there's something we call case management. <laughs> you know, I tell schools, I say, cases are inevitable. Crisis is a choice. Because when a case is not properly managed, you know, because the whole idea about child protection, safety, all of these things is about ability to manage a case and ensure that the case does not degenerate into a crisis. So there has to be protocols. There has to be policy. There has to be system broken down into policy, policy broken down into processes on which everybody within the school system or everywhere children are gathered are trained. Until all of that is in place, it's impossible to protect children. Mm. So, so, so it is not by saying our children are safe. It is about what measures have we put in place Please. to ensure that Thank children you, are safe. Thank you, Taiwo Kilami. Yeah. Because I think we, we ran out of time, but Chino, you had a quick comment to say. Yeah, I was just going to say that, um, I mean, he's already talked about risk assessment, but then I was also going to add that it's also essential for these um, child-focused institutions to invest their time and effort up front so that they can understand the risk and understand the, the and they also develop contingency plans so that mm. they can avoid, you know, crises. Like you know, this. I was going to say to you, Taiwo, based on what you just said, this last statement that you mm. made, it means that mm. it is God, our children are truly in the hands of God. Because this, this workable document that you have talked about to break it down into processes, mm. how many schools, do what document are they working with? What blueprints have the government provided? What is, you know, there's nothing in place. So, it, well, I mean, what, what you just let, let clearly make, told me now is that our children are in the hands of God. Let, let me make a final comment. Just like when Quickly. In the so, hands of God. so, so, um, you know, the funny thing is this. Under a minute, please. Yes, you know, the funny thing is this. There are few schools in Lagos mm. that I'm aware of who have all of these policies in place. You know, the you know, Chris Land has to be one of them, you know. Uh, a couple of other schools that, you know, we are working over time, you know, from time to time to help put all of these things in place. And um, that is why, you know, some of the things that are out there, you know, are a bit painful, you know, mm. because you 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 know that you know that there are efforts here and there to secure the safety of children. But ultimately, where we park in this matter is that I don't want this conversation to end. I hope we can have a, not a part two of the conversation, which is the fact that what are these measures that we need to put in place? And what are the questions parents need to begin to ask? And I will conclude by saying, death at any point in time does not always, always, ne does always means there's a negligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What we need to do is to, is to, be patient and mm. wait for the report of the corona inquiry. We will, we will, and, and we will definitely, we will bring you back doubt. when that report Cause comes cause out, yes. so we can now dissect it based on findings. Yeah. But thank you yes. so much, Iwa Kinami. Thank you, ladies. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again: Children are the world's most valuable resource, and it's best hope for the future. So please, by all means, let's protect our children. We we'll see you guys live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy.